What must I do to be saved? Whoever printed the bumper sticker, read the Bible free gift inside, got it right. That free gift is something that no amount of money could buy. Salvation through Christ. Romans 6, 23, Ephesians 1, verse 6. Many books purport to tell us how to be saved eternally. Only one of them is written by the Savior Himself. He is the one who will be saying, enter and depart. Matthew 25, verse 21 and verse 41, on the world's last day. Since He will use the latter much more than the former, Matthew 7, 13 and 14, it behooves us to find out how to get in the group that is traveling to heaven. We can ask no more important question than, what must I do to be saved? What does God's book say about salvation? It says that all mature people are sinners, Romans 3, verse 23, and that all sinners are lost without Christ, Romans 6, 23, Isaiah 59, verses 1 and 2. It says that each of us will one day stand before the judgment seat of Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 10. The Bible presents salvation as having two sides, God's part and man's part. God, because of His great love for mankind, has done His part in sending Christ to die for the sins of men. The Bible says God demonstrates His own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, Romans 5, verse 8. God's part is called grace, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, Ephesians 2, verse 8. Paul explains that we cannot save ourselves and that we must rely on God's grace. No person is ready to be judged on the basis of his own goodness or morality, Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6. Through faith means that man must also do his part, because no one benefits from a gift until he receives it. Man's part in salvation initially involves obedience to God's five simple requirements for salvation. First, sinners must learn about Jesus Christ. The Savior said, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Therefore, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. John 6 verse 44 and verse 45. One needs to know enough of the details of Jesus' life, birth, teachings, miracles, character, death, resurrection, to be fully convinced that He is God's Son. This faith is gained only by studying the Bible, especially Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Paul said, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Romans 10, verse 17. Second, sinners must believe in Jesus Christ as God's Son. The Savior said, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16 Also, therefore I said to you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am He, you will die in your sins. John 8 verse 24 What must one believe about Jesus? He existed on earth and pre-existed in heaven. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3 and verse 14. He was a great teacher. John 3, verse 2 and John 7, verse 46. And we must believe his teachings. Matthew 28, verse 20. He was a good man and he was sinless. John chapter 8, verse 46. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. He was a prophet of God. Yes, more than a prophet. Luke chapter 7, verse 26. He was a miracle worker, Matthew chapter 8 and chapter 15, verse 30. And one on whom miracles were worked, for instance, the virgin birth and indwelling of the Spirit, Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25, and Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. He was killed by the Jews and Romans, buried in Joseph's borrowed tomb, and resurrected early Sunday morning, Matthew 26 through chapter 28. He has returned to His Father and will one day come back to take us home with Him. John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6, Acts chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. These last three are where many people part company with Christians. In the 18th century, the U.S. Congress issued a special edition of Thomas Jefferson's Bible. Jefferson had excised all references to the supernatural so that it simply contained Jesus' moral teachings. 
The closing words of Jesus' life in this Bible were, There laid they Jesus and rolled a great stone at the mouth of the sepulcher and departed. We end up with a dead philosopher rather than a risen Lord when we limit the Scriptures to what is easy for us to believe. To doubt Jesus' miracles and resurrection is to deny God's power. If God were not strong enough to raise His own Son, what hope is there for an afterlife for the rest of us? 1 Corinthians chapter 15. A God that can make a universe, create life, flood the world, part a sea, and stop the sun can surely raise His beloved sinless Son from a grave. In short, we must believe that Jesus of Nazareth is nothing less than the Son of God. The Jews on Pentecost, having heard the message, were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Acts 2 verse 37. Their question, what shall we do, showed that they believed the message but realized that they needed to do more than have simple belief to reach salvation. James wrote, You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. James 2 verse 24. Third, a sinner must repent of sins. The Savior said, Unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Luke 13 verse 3. His ambassador added, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Acts 2 verse 38. Repentance means a change of mind that produces a change of behavior. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 10. In simple terms, it means to give up on sinful living and to start living to please Christ. It means to stop serving Satan and self and start serving God and others. Philippians 2 verses 1 through 8. Fourth, a sinner must confess faith in Christ. Romans 10 verses 9 and 10. We must verbalize what we have come to believe in our hearts. We should make the same confession the Ethiopian treasurer made before he climbed down from his chariot to be baptized. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, Acts 8, verse 37. A confession of belief in Christ on earth will trigger a similar, think of it, event in heaven. Jesus will confess us before His Father and the angels. The Savior said, Whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven, Matthew 10, verse 32. Amazing! You and I may never know or be known by anyone famous on earth, but every angel in heaven will know our names. The president of our country may not know us, but the one who presides in heaven will. Fifth, a sinner must be baptized in water for the forgiveness of sins. The Savior said, He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Mark 16, verse 16. This is the final step in leaving the world, Satan's domain, and becoming a part of the church, Christ's kingdom. Galatians 3, 26 and 27. This is where God chose to remove our past sins, Acts 22, 16, 1 Peter 3, 21, and give us His Son's name to wear, Acts 11, verse 26. Is it really necessary to be baptized in water in order to go to heaven? Many religious people scoff at the idea, so let's allow God's Word to answer this question. The book of Acts explains God's plan of salvation through several examples of conversion. It records nine specific accounts of conversion. The Jews on Pentecost, chapter 2. The Samaritans, chapter 8. The Ethiopian eunuch, chapter 8. Saul of Tarsus, chapters 9 and 22. Cornelius, chapter 10. Lydia, chapter 16 the Philippian jailer, chapter 16, the Corinthians, chapter 18, the Ephesians, chapter 19. In each example, certain common actions or steps of obedience were taken by those becoming Christians. Each was taught about Jesus before conversion. Each became a believer in Him. Repentance was required. Confession was made. Each was baptized into Christ. Following conversion to Christ, each Christian was required to grow strong in Christ and remain faithful to Him. Acts chapter 14, verse 22, Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. Twenty-seven times in Acts, the book of conversions, we find the words baptized and baptism. Anytime someone asked what he needed to do in order to be saved, baptism was a part of the answer. For example, on the first day of the church's existence, the day of Pentecost, the people with tender consciences who heard Peter's preaching were told to, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, Acts 2.38. 
Note that baptism was for the remission of sins. To say that baptism is unessential is to argue that having a person's sins remitted or forgiven is unessential. Later in Acts, we find the word must connected with baptism on two occasions. On the road to Damascus, Saul was told to go into the city where it would be told him what he must do to please Jesus. Acts chapter 9, verse 6. In the city, he was told to arise and wash away his sins by being baptized. Acts 22, 16. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 11. Later, the Philippian jailer asked what he must do to be saved. Acts chapter 16, verse 30. He was instructed to believe on Jesus to be saved. Chapter 16, verse 31. When Paul and Silas taught him God's will, he was baptized the same hour of the night. Chapter 16, verse 33. Note that he rejoiced after baptism. An indication of his joy of having his sins forgiven. Chapter 16, verse 34. It is interesting that baptism is the only step toward salvation explicitly mentioned in every conversion account. Acts chapter 2, verse 38, chapter 8, verse 12, chapter 8, verse 13, chapter 9, verse 18, chapter 22, verse 16, chapter 10, verse 48, chapter 16, verse 15, chapter 16, verse 33, chapter 18, verse 8, and chapter 19, verse 5. Since God is no respecter of persons, Acts 10, 34, and 35, and Romans 2, verse 11, what He requires of one person to be saved, He requires of all. What He required then, He requires now. We urge you to study carefully these scriptures in your own Bible. See whether these things are so, Acts 17, verse 11. Fully convinced in your own mind, Romans 14, verse 5, and work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, Philippians 2, 12. If we can be of assistance in helping you be saved, or if you have questions that you would like to study further, please talk with the person who gave you this pamphlet. Call the Church of Christ in your community or contact the church that produces this tract series. And now, why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Acts 22, verse 16.